Okay, so moving on to horizontal stretching and shrinking, um, I'd like to call to your attention the similarities to horizontal movement in general. So if you can remember, um, just a quick recap, I don't know if it's quick, but we'll work on it. Um, if you guys remember horizontal shifting, Um, we remember that when we had the idea of adding or subtracting a constant within the function. So it was always talking about how the x values would change. Um, hence the horizontal part. And the fact that not only do the x values change, um, the way we were looking at like stage left, stage right, um, we had that theater analogy, is that it always goes the opposite of what you are doing. So in, in a way, um, we would be shifting, um, if it's plus C, we would be shifting left. If it's minus C, we would be shifting right. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but it's the opposite and we had that explanation. Um, so kind of keep in mind, it, if we're doing horizontal stretching and shrinking, it kind of has the same feel to it, except um, the difference between shifting versus stretching and shrinking is that you're not having additions or subtractions right by your X's. You will have multiplications. So I'll emphasize that, that you have multiply, our multiplication symbol. Um, so if, we want to analyze this further. What happens when we try to modify our function? We have to pay attention to the fact that is our constant greater than one or is our constant a fraction in between zero and one? And in both cases, they are going to show that there is horizontal stretching or shrinking, but it, it's in a way it's, it's somewhat opposite. So um, when you're trying to make up the new points, instead of actually using the multiplication operation, notice that it says every X value is divided by. So multiplication division is kind of like the inverse of the operation. Same thing here, every X value is divided by. So um, when we visualize graphs, um, you might not be able to tell just by looking at the transformed graph whether or not it was a horizontal stretch shrink versus a vertical stretch shrink. The only thing that gives it away is what the function looks like. So, um, and when I say looks like, what is the equation of the function? I should be a little more clearer there. So if I can demonstrate for you, um, if we're looking at g of x equals f of one half x, the first thing I'm going to notice is that there is a one half that's being multiplied to the X. So that's kind of the, the heads up of, okay, it has to do with the horizontal something or other. So um, the other thing I want to pay attention to, so I know it's horizontal. And the fact that I have multiplication, that gives me the heads up of, oh, it's a stretch or a shrink what we want to look at is what the constant is. And so if this is a constant between zero and one, we actually have ourselves a horizontal stretch. And it's horizontally stretched by the factor that you see. In our case, one half. So if you can describe this in English, you're pretty much halfway there. We just have to understand what this means in terms of our function itself. So if we want to take um, a, a sidebar and also explore this with our TI with a concrete function, we can go back to our trusty f of x equals square root of x. And then we can say, okay, I don't want to call it f of x, I'll call it g of x equals um, this would be where the one half is multiplied to the X on the inside of the square root. I guess we call that the radicand, but we'll go with the same idea. So let's take a look on the TI and just kind of show ourselves what does this really mean? 
um, just more so a curiosity. And sometimes this helps us really understand the, the abstract. So I'm going to um, type in. Uh, remember that this time around, as opposed to the vertical stretch or shrink, the factor is on the inside right by the x. So the x values are changing. And so if I were to graph this, the parent graph graphs first, and then the transform function graph second. So you'll notice that if you did not know the equation of the y2 ahead of time, you might mistake it for a vertical shrink. But we know it's a horizontal stretch due to the location of where the factor of the one half is. So I can't now emphasize that enough. You actually have to know the equation of the function to determine whether it's a vertical stretch shrink or a horizontal stretch shrink. And I apologize, I repeat myself a lot, but it can't be bad in the math class. Re repetition's great. So um, what I wanna do, uh, go back to our, our actual example. and talk about what we need to do. Sometimes these horizontal uh, stretches and shrinks, uh, along with the vertical stretches and shrinks, a little hard to see um, if you try to just draw the graph automatically. So I tend to use the coordinate method that I described earlier in the vertical. So kind of keep my, my idea here is um, I'll go with just plotting really quick on the right um, the x and the f of x, just so that you guys can see. All I'm doing is describing these red points that were the original um, key points of the function. And we're, we've been doing that already. So we have negative 4, negative 1, um, negative 1, negative 2, 2, 3, and then one more to go. That's going to be 4, comma 1. So those are those points for the f of x. What I want to do is understand what's happening with my g of x. And so remember, we've been doing these for quite a while now, but this is our g of x function. Um, what I would prefer to do is kind of understand, I'll make a separate chart because it's not the y values that are getting modified, it's the x values that are getting modified. So x values will change. Uh, from the original f of x. And the way they're changing, if you remember, we are taking every x value and we are dividing it by that constant. So in our case, um, we are dividing um, the x's by, who's that constant? One half. And um, we'll go through the math just in case. Um, I know you guys can do this, but sometimes we haven't had to do this in a while, so you might as well go along for the ride. Or you could fast forward if you understand what's going on. So if I'm going to write out my new x values, I want to, I probably have some um, work on the side. I'm taking negative four, I'm dividing it by one half. And so whenever you divide, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we end up getting negative 8 for our new x value. And if we're going to go to the next x value, what do we have? Negative 1 divided by 1 half. It's the same as negative 1 times 2 over 1, which is negative 2. Then we do the same thing. 2 divided by 1 half. Same thing as 2 times the reciprocal, which is 4. And same thing, one more time, four divided by one half, is four times two over one equals positive eight. So you see, these are the X values that are changing. And now you probably uh, may also catch on to the whole division is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And if you knew to go straight to this step, that's okay too. But I just wanna show you where I'm getting my X values. I also want to point out that the y values will not be changing. Um, there's, no, um, there's no vertical stretching or, or vertical movement going on. So the y values are still the same. So 
So same as the original function. So in this case, we're just repeating negative one, negative two, three, and one. You guys kind of have that. Okay, now all I have to do is plot my points. And if I can do that, uh, I want to try to show this on the same screen. There we go. So I'll be plotting negative eight, negative one. And notice my, my nice little coordinate system didn't give me enough room. So I'm just going to have to draw my own. Um, right now I have negative six. So I, I believe negative seven would be here. Negative eight would be about here. Ignoring the other function that's on that side. Uh, happens sometimes, not that life is not perfect. So if we're doing negative eight, negative one, we have our first point over here. And so that is corresponding to this original point. Where has that horizontally stretched? Now the next one's negative two, negative two. Right here. Then we have four, three. And then the last one is eight, one. So again, we're a little bit off of our coordinate system, but we'll do our best in uniform. Eight comma one's about right here. So now, um, when we look at our graph, we're gonna connect our segments, just like we had earlier. We're keeping the same, same design that was originally in the function. And we could kind of see, okay, um, notice the y values did not change. It is the x values that got um, stretched in a way that you kind of, basically you're kind of thinking about pulling each side of the function to the left and to the right, kind of like a string. And you see how the, the, the function modifies. And I'll leave it like that. Um, we're not going to spend too much time. Um, we could kind of check this if we'd like to. Kind of go from there. I'll let you, I'll let you kind of play with it. Now, if we can play a little bit further, um, I think I'd like to do one more with you, just because sometimes this one is a little less straightforward than the vertical um, stretching or shrinking. Um, same sort of idea. Um, the first thing you're going to notice is that the constant is being multiplied to the x. So that is a heads up with something happening horizontally. Um, it is not a shift because you have multiplication. Um, in this case, because the number is greater than one, you have a horizontal shrink, or sometimes people say compress, um, by a factor of two. So we're going to do the same idea. And what this means when you have horizontal shrink, you're going to think if you were pushing the ends of the function, if you're kind of squishing it maybe like a spring, um, you're going to see that the function gets a little bit um, skinnier. Or in this case, skinnier? No, we say narrower, sorry. But you guys probably have the right idea. So again, what we will do is we could take our um, coordinate approach. And feel free if, if you see this visually and you don't have to draw the coordinates, that's okay too. Um, but I know sometimes at first it's nice to, to um, just compare the points. So these are the order pairs for my original function f of x that I've just drawn one more time. And my idea is that I'm going to be changing the x values. That's how, that's what happens when you horizontally shrink or compress. So we have x. So those are getting changed. And what we're doing is we're going to divide all the original x's by by 2. That's the, the number that we see right here. Um, so if I want to find that column, what do I end up doing is I take negative 4 divided by 2. These are nice. This gives me negative 2. Negative 1 divided by 2 gives me uh, negative 1 half. 
Um, two divided by two gives me one, and four divided by two gives me two. So sometimes you get nice numbers, sometimes you have to deal with the fractions, just, just be flexible. And what we're going to do is keep the same y values. We have not done anything special with the y values. So um, keep the same y's. Um, they were originally a negative one, negative two, three, and one. So we're keeping that and we'll plot this with our new graph. So um, negative two, negative one, we are here. Now negative one half, negative two, one, three, and two, one. And we're gonna connect our line segments, um, pretty much trying to follow um, the original pattern where straight line connecting from here to here, straight line connecting from here to here, straight line connecting from here to here. I should say segment, but you guys know what I mean. So now you kind of can see, okay, well, um, if I were to compress the edges of my function, if I took my two hands and I squeezed the function, um, I would end up getting the g of x. And so that's what it means to horizontally um, compress. And this might be more interesting. Um, if you move on to trig, you're gonna see some, um, it's a lot of trig functions, where uh, periodic functions where um, you, they talk about how the period changes of the, of the waves and so on. So um, don't think too hard about it. What I really focus on is what is happening to the um, horizontal, um, horizontal transformations always affect the x values and vertical transformations always affect the y values. That's the kind of thing I want you to pick up on and you can kind of go around with some of what to do with how to get each value. 